we can thank you very much for your talk we will use this mic uh, also for the questions that come from the from the living room i see there is something already uh art is connecting from uh, china so this question is coming from china she says, here is a question from my student. Why do you still pursue authenticity in your paintings, which could be achieved by photography? What do you think is the difference between the two? Or what makes painting unique and necessary? Sorry. Unique and necessary. Yeah. I think of the hair. 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 I 어, 우리가 어떤 대상을 회화로 그린다면 은 대상이라는 물질이 물감이라는 물질로 바뀌게 되는 거죠. 여전히 그 물질이 물질로 있는 상태. 그렇지만 이제 우리가 사진에서 보는 것들은 어, 비물질로 변한 상태를 보게 되거든요. 그래서 어, 사진으로 찍은 것과 회화로 그린 것이 같은 장면을 담았다고 하더라도 거기서 느껴지는 느낌이 굉장히 다른 것 같아요. So that is actually something that I've thought about for a long time. And I think the main difference is uh, a photography isn't an actual object. So when you see a photograph, you actually just see the image, but you don't actually notice the paper that is printed on, where with painting, um, there is paint, there's canvas, there's a lot more tangible objects that uh, exist within that frame. So. When you paint a scene, even, even though it's the same scene, uh, when it's going from an actual existing scene to a, photo uh, a photograph, uh, it feels different than going from an existing scene to a painting, which is also another object. And also, because there are more questions, uh, what is your inner feeling like when you paint? And does it vary among different media or subject matters? 어떤 매체를 가지고 그리냐에 따라서 굉장히 다른 마음을 가지게 되는데 저는 이제 동양화를 했었기 때문에 동양화 매체는 계속 이제 물감이 스며들어요. 스며들게 되면은 어 제가 칠했던 물감이 종이 안으로 사라지거든요. 근데 그 사라지는 물감을 계속 반복해서 얹어서 어 사라지지 않게 만듭니다. So the media actually makes a huge difference. So because I actually um, also do Eastern painting, so I use a lot of ink as well. And when I use ink, it doesn't stay on the surface. It sort of seeps into the paper. It almost disappears into it. So what I do is I just keep adding more and more ink um, and trying to prevent it from disappearing into the ether. 그 느낌은 마치 뭐 떠나가거나 사라지는 것을 붙잡는 느낌이에요. 하지마 하면서 이제 붙잡는 느낌이에요. 근데 음, 어, 유화로 그리게 되니까 어떤 느낌이었냐면은 어, 제가 칠했던 물감이 이제 그대로 남아 있게 되면서 저의 행위가 어떤 흔적으로서 지금 현실의 이곳에 계속 이제 있는 상태가 되는 거죠. 저는 이제 제가 그린 어, 방금 전에 저와 계속 대화하는 상태. 예, 그런 상태가 되는 것 같습니다. 그 인간의 차이가 굉장히 컸어요. 아마 제가, 어, 오래된 것, 과거의 것을 그린 이유도 그때 동양한 매체를 사용했기 때문인 것 같고요. 어, 지금 을지로의 현재를 그린, 그렸을 때 유화를 사용한 것은 아마 그런 연관성이 있는 것 같습니다. So... Because the ink keeps disappearing into the paper, when I'm painting Eastern painting, it almost feels like I'm trying to hold on to something that is refusing to stay, that uh, wanting to go away. 
Whereas when I'm doing oil painting, it just kind of piles up on the surface and I can see what I was doing just a few seconds ago. So it almost feels like a conversation between me and myself. And so with that, I think that's why I was more focused on capturing the past with my Eastern paintings. Whereas now with Ujjiro, um, that's, uh, I think it's more fitting that I'm having a conversation with something that's still in the present. Thank you. Any question from the living room? You just raise your hand and I will give you this, which doesn't bite. <laughs> Otherwise I keep, because there is one more from the students. Um, she's a, an art teacher and she gathers students and they are all listening to the, to the talk, which is why we have so many questions. Are you affected by any masters in art history or any other artists? So, 제가 학교에서 학생들을 가르칠 때도 늘 강조하는 것이 어 독보적인 뭐단한 명의 아티스트가 되려고 하지 말고 어 제발 좀 따라해라. 제발 좀 따라하세요. 이렇게 얘기를 하거든요. 그래서 어 좋은 아티스트가 되기 위해서는 배워야 되는 것 같아요. 네. 그 전에 있었던 어떤 수많은 것들과 달라지기 위해서는 그것들에 대해서 이제 당연히 알아야겠죠. 네. 그렇게 생각하고 있습니다. So I'm inspired by so many different artists that I can't just pick one out. And I'm the kind of person who just researches on and on and on. So I've researched so many different artists and their works. And even when I'm teaching my students at, my, um, at university as well, I always tell them, um, try to imitate as much as possible. Um, maybe don't try to stick out so much right now. Maybe try to learn first. And I think that's how you become an artist. Magali. Hello, hello. Hello, Shanghai. Hello. Hello. Um, thank you so much for this fabulous presentation. Um, looking at some of your pieces, I had to do a double take, thinking that I was looking at real photographs instead of a paintings. In particular, your spear and heap and the hiker and I. How do you make your paintings look so real. I was thinking surrealistic as a term to describe your paintings, but it, it's beyond surrealistic. How do you get that effect? Thanks. Oh, oh, I'm so happy. I think that I think that all the paintings are real. I think that all the paintings 어떤 것을 전달하는데 그 전달하려고 하는 것을 정확하게 사실적으로 가져왔을 때 성공적인 거죠. 그것이 어떤 내면의, 내면의 것이든 어, 외부에 존재하는 것이든지 간에요. 네, 그래서 제가 사진을 보고 그리지만 어, 포털리어리즘하고는 굉장히 다른 어떤 태도고요. 사진의 표면을 베끼기보다는 사진은 어떤 징금다리 역할을 하게 되는 것 같습니다. 그래서 어, 방금 이제 말씀하신 하이키와 나 같은 작업도 어, 비 오는 도시의 풍경을 어떻게 하면 정확하게 그릴 수 있을까, 있을까라고 고민을 하면서 비가 올 때마다 그 장소에 갔어요. 가서 어, 사진을 찍고 다시 와서 이제 그리고 그 다음에 어, 뭔가 좀 막히는 것 같아. 왜 리얼하게 다가오지 않지? 하면 다시 가서 그 장소에서 보는 거죠. 보고 나서 어, 다른 것들을 다시 작업에 가져와서 또 수정을 하고 이런 과정을 거치면서 작업을 합니다. Uh, so I think all painting in a way is realistic because the goal of painting is to convey something, whether it's something internal, like your thoughts or emotions or something external. So even if it's something like abstract, I think it, there is a degree of realism in every painting. And I don't particularly think that my uh, paintings are photorealistic. I think they're realistic in a way, 
and I try to convey the um, thoughts or emotions or situations. Uh, so the one you mentioned, Heike and I, in particular, I want really wanted to capture that um, feeling of being in the rainy city. So every time it rained in Seoul, I would just go to the same spot again, and I'll take pictures, and I'll just take in the view, and then I'll go back to the studio and paint again. And if I felt like it just wasn't an accurate enough representation of that rainy day, then I'll just go back to the spot again, and I'll just repeat that process. One question, and then we go to Claire. Um, one question from the living room. And I show the living room to those who are not here with us. Here we are. OK. Over. Um, so when I was looking at your, when you were wandering in abandoned apartments, um, I don't know how you felt it, but I was struck that the cupboard was open. What make a person to live, if you're taking everything from it and you leave the cupboard, you close it, but it was open. So my question is actually, have you altered it? Have the, those, those art that you were, well, there were pictures, right? Or the, the were well, the pictures or they, uh, they were paintings uh, inside the apartment, paintings. Okay, so have you altered it? So have you took this horse out of somewhere and put it on the, on the table? And if you did it, why? So what was that? Oh, it looks good. It was exactly as it looked. <laughs> 그러니까 어떤 느낌이었냐면은 어 살아 사람이 살고 있었는데 어 어느 날 이불도 개지 않고 사람만 가버리는 듯한 느낌이었어요. 네. It was yeah, it was exactly as it was, and it really felt like one day a family was living there, and the next day they just had to leave in a hurry without even making their bed or anything. So it was absolutely as it was. 나중에 그 이후를 어그 아파트에 아직 살고 있는 주민한테 들었는데 그게 뭐냐면은 어 이사를 하는 대가로 서울시에서 보상을 해주는데 보상을 해주는 그 금액으로는 갈수 있는 데가 없었다는 거예요. 그래서 최소한의 집만 가지고 아파트를 나갔다 그렇게 들었습니다. So he actually um, asked someone who was still in the building later on why that was the case. Uh, so apparently the city of Seoul actually compensated you if you moved out of that building, but that money wasn't actually that much money, so they couldn't really go to anywhere fancy or even anywhere. So they were almost left out on the street, so they had to take just the little they could take on their back and then just move out in a hurry. Uh, Claire, would you like to unmute yourself and ask your question? Otherwise, I can read it for you because I don't see you in a camera. Uh, she's asking, is there, an, is there a special reason why you don't usually draw people painting? painting. Yes. Uh, uh, 굉장히 어려운 부분인데 사실 저는 그 풍경에 인물이 있는 거를 굉장히 그리고 싶어요. 그리고 싶은데 음, 아마 그림 그리시는 분들은 공감할지도 모르겠는데 인물이 들어가는 순간 풍경을 인물화에 맞게 그려야 돼요. 근데 저는 이제 풍경을 어떤 어떤 머티리얼 어, 물질적으로 주목해서 그렸기 때문에 그 방법이 이제 잘 맞지 않는 거죠. 근데 언젠가는 좀 그려볼 생각입니다. So that's actually quite a difficult question for me to answer because I really do want to paint scenes with people in it uh, it's, uh, it's something i would actually love to do but uh, one thing about painting is that if there is a like, person within that scene it's usually that the scene is painted around the person not the other way around so that's not something that i'm completely um, comfortable with doing just yet so that's why i'm putting it off okay and one question from the living room carrie just asking Korean. I'm a translator. Um, 선생님의 작품을 보고 제가 여러 가지 감정을 많이 느꼈는데요. 
그 선생님께서 그 한국의 역사에 그 당시에 지금 서울을 보면 너무 많이 변해 있잖아요. 선생님이 초반기에 하셨던 그런 작품과 사회적인 컨텍스트가 선생님의 동기부여가 어떤 내용이 좋았기 때문에 아니면 그 알리고 싶으셨기 때문에 그 동기부여가 아주 강력히 된걸 제가 느꼈어요. 그러면 지금 서울을 봤을 때그 세대적인 차이도 많고 이런 빌딩을 보면 그 당시에 느낌 전혀 없거든요. 근데 선생님이 하신 그 작품과 지금의 서울을 봤을 때 저는 개인적으로 조금 좋은 면도 있지만 세다 면도 있고 여러 가지 감동을 많이 느끼는데 선생님께서 계속 그렇게 시너리를 가지고 계속 하신다고 하시면 지금 2023년에 이 빌딩들을 봤을 때 어떤 동기를 느끼시고 혹시나 나중에 또 30년이 지났을 때 서울이 어떻게 보이실지 저는 그게 굉장히 궁금해요. 그래서 그 부분 얘기해 주시면 감사할 것 같습니다. 네. <laughs> so, yeah, so um when she was looking at your paintings, um uh, she felt a lot of different emotions uh with that she uh, particularly noticed the social context of the 70s and 80s in Seoul and it was a very strong trigger for your work and with that now in 2023 uh, the social climate now and what's happening so, uh, culturally right now What sort of trigger would it be in maybe 20 or 30 years time and how would your work look like? s e o u l is a very modern city, but I want to make a high building on the top of the building. What do you see? On the top of the building, there are a lot of buildings in the top of the building. When you go to the top of the building, 제가 그리는 그 건물들이 꽉차 있어요. 예. 그런데 어떤 미디어를 통해서 보여지는 서울은 대로변에 있는 현대식 서울만 보여지는 거죠. 근데 실제로는 어 거의 한 70% 정도가 옛날의 서울의 모습을 그대로 가지고 있는 이제 시간이 흐르지 않는 곳이고 그 다음에 30%가 이제 보여지는 서울인 거죠. 네. 그리고 이제 사람들의 삶을 보더라도 역시 이제 그런 양상으로 예, 살고 있고요. 음, 그래서 어, 도시가 도시가 매력적으로 보일 때는 어, 그런 외부적인 면과 내부적인 면들이 어, 어떠한 조화를 이룰 때인 것 같아요. 그래서 오래된 것과 그 다음에 새 것이 어, 서로의 역할을 할때 어떤 아름다움 그 다음에 어떤 시간성이 있는 도시가 되는 거죠. 풍부한 도시가 되는 건데. 제가 아쉬운 거는 서울이라는 도시가, 어, 과거의 것들을 계속 이제 지우려고 해요. 예, 지우려고 하고, 어, 아주 과거의 것만 이제 문화재로 남겨놓는 방식으로, 그런 식으로 보고 있죠. 그러다 보니까 많은 사람들이, 어, 밀려나고 고통받고 하는 어떤 현실이 벌어지고 있고, 어, 그런 데서 저는 이제, 뭐랄까, 어떤 스품 같은 것들을 늘 느끼게 돼요. 네. 그래서, 음, 제 작업을 통해서 그런 얘기를 하고 싶었고, 아마, 어, 계속 이런 얘기를 해야 되지 않을까, 할수 있지 않을까, 그렇게 생각하고 있습니다. Oh gosh, that was a long answer. <laughs> so, I mean, Seoul on the surface is such a modernized metropolis. Uh, there are so many cutting edge technology and, uh, newer buildings, but that's just the surface. That's just what we see on the main roads. But just behind those buildings, there are still these buildings uh, from the 70s and 80s, these tiny, um, old, dilapidated, neglected buildings still existing. And that actually, they actually make up about 70% of Seoul. It's the 30% what we see is just the surface. And I think that also reflects how we live uh, today's world as well, I think. We think we're um, living in this abundance, but there's still so much um, impoverishment and poverty. And uh, so the conservatism and old ways of thinking. Uh, but I don't think that's something that uh, needs to be completely changed. I think a city is the most beautiful when the past and the future coexist in harmony. And with that, I think what I'm saddened about is the fact that Seoul is constantly trying to just erase the past and just look to the future. 
Um, so unless it's like a very ancient, very old um, I don't know, relics like from Joseon Dynasty or Goryeo Dynasty, we're very quick to forget the past uh, from just 50 years ago. And what? <laughs> Uh, so I think the stories that I started painting are still very much relevant, and I think that's the kind of story that I'll continue to paint. Thank you. We take one more question before we finish, and we jump into the States. Good night. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Hi, Andrea. Hi. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for your beautiful work and for this evening. It's just been lovely. Really. Um, brought a lot of feelings into my heart, like looking at your work and, and listening to the conversation, like it brings up a lot of nostalgia and also just like a, a feeling of uh, presence, like being very centered and like the word patience comes to mind. And I wonder with you, like at what point in your life did you know that you were like, that your work, uh, um, required and was worthy of so much time and the dedication like how did you dedicate yourself to to really committing to that much endeavor if that makes sense oh 사실 이제 많이 인내를 해야 되는 작업이고요 어 어떻게 얘기해야 될까요 제 성격이 좀 인내를 해야 되는 성격인 것 같아요. 그래서 빠른 시간 내에 어떤 것들이 그려지는 것이 부족해 보이는 거죠. 항상 항상 부족해 보이는 거죠. 근데 어왜 그런가 이제 생각을 해본 적이 있는데 내 자신을 보여주는 것은 별로 중요하지 않구나라는 생각을 하게 됐어요. 언제부턴가 대신에 저 바깥에 있는 내가 감동을 느끼는 어떤 것을 어, 다른 사람들한테 저게 굉장한 것이야 라고 보여줘야 돼 라는 식으로 이제 생각을 하게 된 거죠. 그렇게 되니까 어, 바깥에 있는 것들은 사실 제가 굉장하게 느낄 만큼 쉽게 그릴 수 없는 거잖아요. 함부로 그릴 수도 없고. 어, 그러다 보니까 는 있는 힘을 다해서 열심히 그리게 된것 같습니다. So... Those require a lot of patience, and I think, as a person myself, uh, I think I'm the type of person who um, is um, very um, designed for patience as well, in a way. Uh, I don't really like it when things are just done in a hurry and produced in mass, and I think one thing in particular, so um, as the more I paint it, I realize that I don't actually want to uh, show, um, particularly show what's on the inside, uh, or, or like what's uh, like show about myself, but rather I want to um, show the people what's out there and how magnificent and beautiful is it. It is that um, what's out there, and I think that's something that I can't just handle willy nilly, and that's why I think that requires a lot more patience because it's outside of myself and it's bigger than me. Thanks a lot. And then. I said that that was the last question, but it's so hard to stop when questions keep on coming. So just one more and that's it. And then we set you free. Elena, can you please unmute yourself and ask your question? Elena, yes. Hello. Uh, I should okay. again. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> okay, ju well. I just read what, what I wrote. Uh, so uh, I really love your work, the reality of it. But uh, you seem to prefer to paint uh, like round down or abandoned buildings, like a way to preserve the past and the history behind it. But I guess in Seoul, like in Shanghai, there's also another reality, a more modern one. Uh, don't you find the same appeal in the sight of modern Seoul with the high scrapers and yeah, I guess the shopping malls or a different? reality than the old one. Thank you. 동기 부여가 되지 않아요. 네. 어, 뭐라 그럴까요? 음. 어, 
화가 한테 있어서 동기부여가 되는 것들은 내가 그럴 수 있는 것이어야 되는 것 같아요. 그러니까 내 가능성이 있을 때 어, 그것에 대한 그리고 싶은 욕망이 이제 생기는데 어, 제가 어, 어떤 모던한 카페 같은 것들을 그려본 적이 전혀 없기 때문에 저한테는 그것을 그릴 수 있는 가능성이 하나도 없는 거예요. 그런데 예, 반대로 오래된 어떤 것을 봤을 때는 그것이 가능성으로서 이제 다가오게 되는 거죠. 그런 차이가 있는 거죠. Um, so to sum it up, no, it doesn't really inspire him at all. I think um, as a painter, if you want to be inspired by something, then it has to be something that you're, you know you can paint. Uh, because he's not, like, he doesn't paint um, new and modern cafes or um, apartment buildings um, or shopping malls or whatever. So he knows that he's not going to be inspired by it. Whereas when you see something old, like a dilapidated building or neglected area, uh, he sees it as a possibility. So I think that's why he keeps painting these old buildings and neighborhoods. Thank you very much. And now I can say, class is missed. <laughs> that's it. Thank you very much.